Well, hi everybody, and welcome to Jim's Sword Channel. Yes, that's right, we're no longer doing scale modeling, we're only gonna work with swords now. And uh, I hope nobody minds. I'm sure none of you are unsubscribing even now. That was a dramatic pause. Okay, well, sorry again for the crappy sound, but I'm not doing uh, excellent sound. This, this video, because I need to make a video, damn it. I've uh, got stuff, four boxes, four whole complete boxes and this is my new basement as you can see it's kind of cool because I've never had a lot of space to actually have like workbenches and and things and I've never had a basement before I, I had a little kind of little small basement when I lived in Illinois that had a washer and a dryer but really didn't have much space in it it had like a two-car garage kind of thing anyways so that said yes uh, I do have my sword here and uh, what else I have I have my my moisture trap for my airbrush and I fixed it because I had a vice that I could actually, you know, kind of, uh, you know, fix it with. So Ernie, I fixed my moisture trap without having to buy a new one. I did scratch it up a little bit, but you know, it was worth it to get it actually, what happened was it fell on the floor and it, you know, it got, the plastic part got completely out of whack. So I really had to put some pressure on there to, to, to get it off. Hopefully it still works. I'm not sure like the, the the gauges and stuff may have may have decided to go plonk on me, but we'll find out when we go to use it. I just can't find my compressor, so it's it's around somewhere. Um, but look look in my basement what I found. It's it's a oil can like like an oil can from the Wizard of Oz. I'm actually going to oil one of these swords. I guess I'm going to ruin one of these uh, things, but I could keep it for because this sword has actually been in the garage in a lot of moisture for a while now. So I'm, I'm going to uh, apply some oil to treat said steel to keep it from getting all rusty. This is what you know people do with things. Now I have no idea what kind of oil is in here. I assume it's just some kind of lubricating oil. Um, I used to use just motor oil and stuff, or WD-40 even. Did I used to put WD-40 in? I can't remember. But anyways, any oil seems to work. I've had this sword since the 80s, so you can laugh at me and say, oh, he doesn't know what he's doing putting that kind of oil on there. Well, yeah, but I've been doing it for like decades, so oil is not, or sword is not rusty. All right, but I will I will get on with the, the things because I know you don't really care about me oiling swords. I, need, I do need to oil the other side at some point, so we will save that. Oh, God, this thing's heavy. We will save that for another time. This is a, for my Spanish friends, this is a, Probably uh, Tanto, is it Tanto Monta? I think it's in Latin. But it's some kind of like Charles the Fifth. Is that right? A replica sword from the from like I said the 80s. It's it's very very hard and thick steel, and not sharpened of course, but uh, very very ornamental with that fluffy red stuffs. All right, so um, what did we get in? So, uh, you know, you guys probably want me to talk about it. It's my moving experience, right? Look, so skip to, I don't know, I'll put a thing. Skip to this point. Uh, if you want to skip over all this stuff and just get to the unboxings. But um, but I, I will, for the people who, who give a crap <laughs> about my moving experience, it was so much fun. Let me tell you, you know, we, we, uh, we had to pack up everything in our house, of course, and put it on two 20-foot, 20 28-foot trailers, which we thought we were only going to use seven linear foot of one second trailer and we ended up using all but four linear feet so yeah we we, we slightly well we got some bad quotes by moving companies saying oh this is how much square footage we think we're going to use yeah they were wrong uh <laughs> so anyways uh abf we went with the the upac.com um service website whatever and it's with abf uh, freight shipping and basically they send you trucks and they and you load the trucks up and get help or either uh, your own help or you get paid help to load up your your stuff on the on the trailers and then of course unload the trailers which we did we got help because boy it was a lot of work I and mean, it was very hot in fresno when we left and it was rather not super hot here but it was a lot of work and yeah it was hot moving stuff off the truck as well so uh yeah that all went fairly well um and then we we five days of driving, of course, because we had three dogs uh, to to take in two cars, my car and my wife's car, which is was hers is an SUV and mine's just a little Civic two door, uh, you know, four four seater. 
So I thought, oh, I'll put the big dog in the back with me, and occasionally I'll have my child riding with me or whatever. Uh, it turned out that my child read, rode me with me the whole way, which was nice. But at one point we had me, my child, and all three dogs. The other two were smaller Chihuahua uh, Terrier mixes, and all of them were in the car in this little Civic. So yeah, that was interesting. Uh, but yeah, so we had to stop, of course, and stay at Motel 6, because Motel 6 is one of the few places that takes pets. Uh, other other hotel chains take pets, but they usually want to charge you like you know fifteen dollars a pet or something, and then sometimes they only allow you one or two, and we had three. So Motel Six, other than the one location, didn't seem to care whether what how many pets we had, and we actually had a cat with us too, and the cat was um, in a carrier or whatever. So the cat was not a problem, but the uh, but we had four pets with us. Yeah, you know, anyways. So um, one little cool thing, I, I moved into this basement, and there's a 1954 Dewalt. Uh, reciprocating uh, pole saw here, which uh, I, I there there's this Dewalt um, little manually thing, which has got a workbench plan. Now I th first thought it was the instruction manual for the thing, and then I realized, oh no, it's not. And it um, it has this plan to build this wonderful workbench. Yes, well, workbench. <laughs> The person actually built the workbench from this plan, I'm assuming, back in the 50s, I'm guessing, and of course this was in another house, because this house is only, was only built in 1985, but they moved it down here, and it's still got the DeWalt saw, and I'm guessing it probably still even works. So yeah, lots of cool little things were left down here in the basement for me. Uh, this, this workbench uh, was, the, was here, as well as this, this one was out in the um, garage, and I just moved it down here. Uh, so yeah. Cool space. I think I'll do probably maybe my unboxings here. I'll probably be able to airbrush down here, and uh, maybe if, uh, if I'm so inclined, I'll even build down here. But we'll see. Uh, but certainly, uh, there's lots of space to do stuff, and mostly I've been just fixing furniture and things like that. All right. So that's pretty much the, the quick uptake. You know, uh, moved into the new house. House leaks. It's got water problems in various rooms, and mostly the sunroom. But uh, you know, it's typical New England kind of things. No, nothing big surprise. We kind of knew that the summer was going to need work. Uh, but you know, typical, typical kind of stuff. It's been a little bit rainy here in New England. Uh, for, for those of you who are going, what's he talking about? Well, I moved. I moved from California to New England. So yeah, that's that's the quick summary. All right, from our friends at uh, Flyhawk, they have sent us one of their new kits with, I think, stuff. And if I can get all the styrofoam off, or styrofoam. See, my brain is not really working well after this trip. I will say things even worse than I normally am. I'll say things like styrofoam instead of bubble wrap. I meant to say bubble wrap, but I said styrofoam instead. Um, all right, so what do we have here? We have the HMS Prince of Wales 1941 0.5. Well, that's new. <laughs> I've seen him do 1945 and a half, but I've never seen 1945.5. Or 1941, excuse me, 1941.5. Makes sense. 0. 0.6 would, might make more sense because that would be like the middle of the year, six months. Not sure we shouldn't date things like that, actually. But anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, and then they also included their uh, Prince of Wales 1941.5 wooden deck. So, and uh, they also have a color... Um, outline here as well as the very, very meticulous and detailed looking wooden deck. So uh, that actually looks probably like one of the best laser cut wooden decks I have ever seen. Uh, not a far, well actually no, I have a pretty far ranging experience being that we started getting these when they first really were appearing back in the um, 2000s and uh, yeah, this, is, this definitely looks like a level above. I mean they've got all the little cutouts for the, the plastic bits that are going to come up through the decks. So yeah, that um, that tells me this thing must be super thin, uh, obviously, unless they extended the pieces uh, on the deck to allow for um, usage of the, the wood deck. And as usual, they include some nice bits like the uh, little uh, color insert there, and uh, they've got, of course, their nice manual set up. This one has, and I'm not sure this, this I doubt is included with the kit. This is a, well, no, actually, no, this is a, um, some model cut full haul. Usually they'll say, like, it's a special edition with extra stuff. So, yeah, this is the, this is the deluxe edition, so probably this additional photo etch is coming with it. 
Um, HMS Prince of Wales, uh, photo etch for uh, cranes and various um, you know, superstructure bits, railing, um, yeah, a lot of a lot of photo etch there. And then um, just to kind of quickly, oh, oh, cool, they've got a little box in here with, uh, I don't usually do this obviously, but yeah, after this one I'll do it. And since these have been sitting for a while, and I may not get to doing a, a full unbox for these for, you know, who knows. <laughs> but yeah, they've got a little uh, Prince of Wales medallion. Let's see if I can just open it real quick. Included in the kit. Very cool. Like very well made and so forth. But yeah, it looks like some brass uh, with gold type plating or some kind of gold simulated gold plating. Uh, it has the, the Prince of Wales emblem. And it has a couple of screws which I think it screws in from the back, I'm guessing. Yeah, it's got a couple of screw bits back there. You can screw it into something of your choice, things of your choice that you wanted to mount it to. So that's a little interesting addition, and as well they've got other bits like this. Um, uh, I think these are deck pieces, I want to say. It says, oh, main barrels. So it includes some main barrels and includes some ventilating um, something. Ventilating, it says, I think it says orientation, but that doesn't make sense. Anyways, they're really, they're really small little parts, as you might be able to see on there if I get close enough. Um, I have model. That's just the weight, and yeah. So I'll definitely try to do a, a boxing, an unboxing with more detail on this. But uh, for those of you who might want their appetites wetted, I hope that did wet it slightly for this kit. Uh, these are like easily some of the best ship kits I've been seeing lately myself. So um, your opinion may vary. <laughs> Uh, all right, what else do we have? We have something from the Model Rectifier Corporation. They were quick to change my address, and I think the first thing I got in from, um, or was the first thing I got in from, uh, uh, I want to say this is my, from, be from Ryefield. But I don't know, because they don't put the things on here anymore, or I think that's Ryefield, but I'll we'll have to check. No, I think it was uh, one of these two boxes. So, we got in the um, Academy, I'm not even going to try that, it's a, it's a Huckworth TA183, Huckabeen, Huckabeen, so yeah, interesting looking, uh, probably late war or paper aircraft, I'm not sure the TA183, was that built and made and flew around or was that, is this one of the rocket planes? I don't know, that's the comet, right, the comet's the rocket plane. Yeah, I think so. I only know these things because I played the Super Weapons version of, of uh, um, I'm just kidding. I, 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 we've had books. Uh, I was thinking about Battlefield, the Secret, Secret Weapons Edition of Battlefield 1942. Um, you know, I, I, I did actually used to see these things in various other historical tidbits. All right, so we also got in from Academy and MRC, the USN SDB five from the Battle of the Philippine Sea. So hopefully there's enough light there. I'm catching it. It's not reflecting too bad. Uh, I'll have to see how this format works out. Obviously I'm doing this for the first time. It's like, is this going to work? I guess no. I'll have to check. And see, I'm just as weird as I normally was. That hasn't changed. Yes, it is. All right. Um, what have we got in here from, I think, Guessing right field, but who knows with some of these packages? I just never know. It's like a surprise. Oh no, it's X. I mean, I used to get boxes like this from Tacom. They were the ones that used to send me things that were all sealed in this yellowish tape. But then Tacom, I lost favor with Tacom, like I did with Mang, and like I did with Dragon. <laughs> they don't love me anymore. That's a long story. All right. Um. Hold on. Okay, here we go. Okay, what do we got? Oh, yes, it, it is. Oh, they changed their logo. Cool. I like the new logo. All right, we got the we got the uh, the Sturm Tiger. A Sturm. What are they calling it? Sturm Morsa. Sturm Morsa Tiger. I never knew to have that title. So it's a Sturm Morsa Tiger with a full interior. I'm showing a kind of a cutaway on the. The, the box here, but um, the RM5012, and uh, they've changed their logo, which is, I like it, I like the new logo, and now it's 
RFM. I think it was RMF before on their logo, wasn't it? So now it makes sense, ride field model. I don't know why they did the RMF before. It was just a, probably a, a marketing faux pas, but uh, I'll open this one too since, since it, uh, it looks so cool. And you can see the pretty picture there while I look at the parts. Um, but yeah, this, uh, this looks like a all new, obviously new tool kit for a ride field. I um, don't think they've done anything even close to this before, uh, other than tigers, obviously, but uh, so it might share some suspension parts and things like that but if it's a full interior kit there are going to be a lots of parts in that um, particular uh, type of mobile artillery so yeah they've got some gray and some beige and some brown parts in here i've never seen them actually mix their colors this much uh, so that's interesting um, and um, yeah this one says tiger one so this is probably from the tiger one release and this one says Storm Tiger, so this is the newer one. I'm just going to say Storm Tiger, yep. What did these say? Just out of curiosity. These were the Tiger 1, so there are parts from their Tiger 1 releases in here. And uh, then there's lots of you know, there's Tiger 1 also. And there is Tiger 1. How would they reproduce, do an in, in, interior with um, this many or, original parts? Now, I guess they're using a lot of their Tiger 1 interior parts. I just would be guessing. And of course, here's the new upper hull piece, Stone Taiga. And again, this is new. You can tell the, this is all the, the new plastic here. So the hull is new because it's in the same color, same color. Uh, track links, individual track link bits. Actually, whoa, 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 horsey. Well, that's, those look different. They've got like, holes down through the sides of the pins, I guess for the for the pins themselves. But they yeah, they're they're individual um, link link to link uh, type thing. And then of course this piece, which is uh, lots of the uh, side armor and uh, other bits for the the gun. And of course probably this is unique for this kit too being a lot of glass that's distinctive for the Sturm Tiger, uh, as well as some photo etch for the back. And then of course this is a manual, which is nicely printed in color. And has color guides for painting on the inside, which is nice. And uh, it is 28 pages long, so clearly there is a lot of assembly. And they're starting to do full color, even like side shots and things like that, which is nice. This is a well, well made manual. I can tell just by just the briefest glance I have given it. I mean, I can't speak to its accuracy in terms of build, but in terms of quality of, of publication and layout and things like that. I think this is probably one of the nicest manuals I, mean, I have seen to date. So good job on that RFM. Rightfield model, who is now RFM as properly on their logo. <laughs> they're, they're, they're gonna hate me now. They're gonna hate me. They're gonna cut me off. Oh, that's Jim Starkweather. He's always making fun of us. I'm not. I'm, I'm being complimentary. You are reading my my um, my sarcasm at attempt at humor. It is a negative. It is not. It is a positive. It's just, it's just the way we, we silly Westerners talk. We don't mean anything mean by it. I promise. Um, I can't even, of course, this is the test. Of, oh, I, I almost made it. I could almost get it in there, I think. But yeah, that's the test, is to try to get it back in the box. It's like a game. Pull it out of the box, try to get it back in the box. Nope, nope, I failed, I failed. All right, so we do have that kit available, and I would like to find it a home. So if you're if you're interested in doing a review, detailed review on a build, not just an inbox review, um, and want to build this kit, or you want to build it as a feature, like a feature article, where you maybe build it and like put it into some vignette or some kind of base or something, that would be great too. You can do that. Uh, just contact us and maybe show us some some of your work and what you've just done in the past. Same thing for for the Prince of Wales and the, the wood deck kit, which of course we want incorporated into a build, because you know, it's a nice kit. Um, it's harder to find people to always build these, so we'll say these these will be totally, you could do in boxes, <laughs> reviews on these. We'd love to find somebody who would do full builds and so forth, but you know, it's harder for uh, the variety of kits that we get to, to always ask that, but uh, let's see if I can get these to stay. It's like a, okay, all right, he's gonna stay. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I didn't use up all my uh, thing and it, it's still going, right? 
Are you still going? Yeah, it's still going. Yay, yay, good. Um, that's always a plus. Thanks for watching, and I appreciate you guys holding on for a month, probably, right? Or, or more. I think it was probably something like five weeks. But it did take a while to get even to this degree kind of set up in my upper office where all my, you know, computer working, programming kind of stuff is going to go on. That's even less in good shape. I see I've got little things floating around in the air. Those don't actually get caught in the video, but it, actually if they did, it would be kind of cool. So hopefully down here too, I mean, I have very little light coming in from outside. So if I can get enough light to shoot down here, it means I can even do this at night, which I've never been able to do before. And I've always been locked into like, you know, oh, I got to have enough light to shoot and so forth. So, but I got a couple of my little work lights down here on plus all these regular ceiling lights. So hopefully it's working. But let me know in the comments section how it, how it went and then whether you like this new quasi new format. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, well, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time on Cracking, no, not Cracking the Box, on Partially Cracking the Box, but mostly Mail Call. Bye-bye.